So here's my question. What do you get when you take Ubuntu as the core operating system, throw some professional spit and polish on top of it, give it a few design tweaks here and there, give it very tight hardware integration, along with some custom tools to be able to manage your hardware more effectively, and some professional support behind it. Well, folks, in my opinion, you get Pop! OS. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at. Pop! OS has now officially replaced Fedora 29 on my only rig that I use every day. The question is, will it be sticking around past Fedora 30s? Release. Well, that's what I'm going to try and dig into a little bit today. Uh, this is going to be very personal to me because I am using this one as opposed to sort of generic Linux opinions. So hope you enjoy. Stick around. Let's dig into Pop! OS 19.04. Okay, now before I go any further, I just want to say first up that Pop! OS is, has a very distinct design uh, user interface and user experience to it that is uh, that is kind of fun and quirky and unique um, but at the same time makes a lot of sense to me personally uh, everything from the fonts to the icons to the gnome shell theme to the wallpapers all have a very specific uh, a very specific function and a very specific appeal to them now it's not for everyone I've seen some people bemoan the the sort of the color scheme and that kind of thing uh, but for me I really dig it now if this is the sort of thing that you're into user interface user experience design then I definitely recommend that you check out today's sponsor and that is Skillshare now Skillshare is an online learning platform with more than 25,000 online courses to choose from, especially in and around those like business, technology, creativity, design, that kind of thing. And there's two recommendations that I wanna make if you're watching some of my stuff. First of all, Linux for Absolute Beginners is going to give you a really good grounding in getting started in the Linux world. Now obviously they use Ubuntu in the example, or at least Joseph does, but he covers a lot of the basics in terms of command line, user management, all of that fun stuff. So that is definitely one recommendation. But like I mentioned, if you're into kind of user experience design process and that kind of thing, then definitely check out this particular class by Lindsay Marsh. She gives a really good grounding in uh, what user experience design theory should be and, uh, and a process that you can use. Now, because of the fact it's very theoretical, it's not really specific to any one tool. So you can kind of apply this to whatever your workflow might look like. But if you're interested in user experience design and user interface design, uh, then you should definitely check out this class. Class. You can do that by jumping down into the link in the description below. That'll give you two free months of Skillshare Premium to be able to access these courses and many others in areas that you might be interested in. So definitely jump on to the link in the description or the first comment below and check out Skillshare for yourself. And special thanks once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of recap what I've got going on with my own setup here of Pop! OS, and then we'll start talking about what's specific to Pop! OS and why you might wanna check it out. Or not, you could just completely pass it by. Now, here's the thing. For me, Pop! OS is, uh, was the thing that struck me the most when I used it for the first time was the fact that the keyboard shortcuts and the, the way that GNOME fun functioned was uh, just so much more logical than what I found on a lot of distributions, including Ubuntu. Um, also, their custom theme was kind of nice, and so that drew me in as well, the detail of the fonts and that kind of thing. But I'm not going to rag on too much about the appearance of this distribution now. I think I've made my point pretty clear with that. So here's what I've got going on at the moment. As you can see, I've just dashed to docked it on the right-hand side here and uh, that's just because that's the way I'm used to working. The things that I want to point out is that Pop! OS out of the box gives you a lot more uh, control over your hardware. Um, now, in the form of power management, depending on what kind of laptop you have, the last laptop that I had that I was running Pop! OS on, I had hybrid graphics and they had a very, very simple process for managing hybrid graphics. Get ready for it. You download the NVIDIA option. If you want a way around NVIDIA driver headaches, then you just come down here to the download button and you download the NVIDIA version. Now, of course, I've downloaded the Intel version because I only have integrated graphics on this laptop. But if I did have an NVIDIA card, which I did before, an NVIDIA Optimus card, as a matter of fact, that was pretty old, then that was the edition that I downloaded. And what it gave me was a very simple toggle up here in the menu to be able to switch between Intel graphics and NVIDIA graphics. 
And boy howdy is it an elegant solution when so much of your time can be spent messing with NVIDIA graphics, especially when it comes to switchable graphics. So that, that's one example. The other example is that they do give you a few more options here on the toolbar, just one click options for uh, do not disturb, for locking the screen, for rotating it around, for giving yourself options. And these will appear and disappear depending on what kind of hardware you have set up. Now, the other thing is when you are dealing with power, you can see we've got a pretty comprehensive power panel here in the GNOME settings where it shows you the battery level of things like your mouse, your keyboard, and other things like your screen brightness, automatic brightness, all of that sort of stuff. And, uh, and also the other thing that I find really, really helpful is when you're dealing with a particular display that might have a, uh, a higher resolution, it actually has its own built-in high pixel density display uh, daemon. So it'll actually manage all of the scaling of the apps uh, itself, as opposed to uh, just leaving that to, to happen with the desktop environment. It usually gives a much more consistent result when it comes to scaling the interface to, to suit the resolution of the screen that you have. Now, of course, System76, the company behind Pop! OS, have a vested interest in making this happen because a lot of the machines that they make, obviously, have NVIDIA graphics in them or have high pixel density displays. And so they wanna make sure that they support uh, the machines that they're producing and making the hardware experience as seamless as possible. Now, the benefit for us end users is that we get to benefit from a lot of the hardware effort that they put in. Uh, and they pass on all of the tweaks and changes that they can make uh, to this uh, to this distribution that you, anyone can go and download and use. So it's that fact that this distribution is uh, is consistently being patched and tweaked to work better with specific sets of hardware and with uh, you know more up to date graphic stacks and all of that kind of thing that gives um, a lot more confidence to people that want to use this distribution for getting serious work done or at the very least getting the most out of the hardware that they have installed. Now that's all pretty deep theoretical stuff. In terms of surface level stuff, uh, they use the elementary OS, uh, they use the elementary OS uh, app store. I can't remember exactly what they call it, but uh, they use a version of that and uh, that manages a lot of the applications. Now out of the box, they don't have Snap or Flatpak enabled. At least it wasn't in my case. I don't know if I'm a fringe case, but usually you're just left with the software that is available in the repositories. That is to say that Ubuntu has some of the largest repositories ever, so you're not really left, uh, you're not really left wanting. What I will say though, is to get more up-to-date versions and rolling versions, I guess, of those, um, of those applications, you definitely wanna make use of Snap and, uh, and Flatpak. So for me, one of the first things I did was uh, I installed the Flatpak backend, I installed the Snap uh, backend, and uh, also installed GNOME software so that I could manage those with a, with a graphical user interface. Um, and it's pretty straightforward, really. That'll also give you the preferences if you want to change where, uh, which mirror the Ubuntu repositories are pulling from. Um, because I will say out of the box, the pop shop um, gives you very, very limited options when it comes to managing your repositories. And unless you wanna um, jump around in a config file, uh, they really only give you an option to tick or untick different repositories as opposed to changing the mirrors that, uh, that, the, um, that the default GNOME software gives you. Now, again, Pop! OS, because it's based on Ubuntu 19.04, benefits from a lot of the same things that Ubuntu 19.04 does. So go and check out my first impressions video if you haven't seen that already. But uh, in terms of the smoothness of GNOME Shell, in terms of the animations being fluid, uh, in terms of things launching relatively quickly, uh, all of that is all pretty good stuff. Um, Gnome Shell definitely feels lighter than it ever has before. Like I said in Ubuntu, in the Ubuntu first impressions, um, and to me, the combination of that with the very sensible keyboard shortcuts that uh, Pop! OS uses, for example, just using super up and down to change workspaces, uh, this is a huge productivity boost for me and it makes GNOME feel more useful than ever. Now, one of my biggest criticisms, however, for Pop! is that it does still seem to be kind of uh, heavy on the resources. Now, I've got a fair bit of stuff going on here. And, uh, and as you can see, I'm using 2.3 gig of RAM. I've got eight gig to, uh, to use, so I may as well use all of it. But, um, but Pop! OS has always been one of the heavier distributions that even running GNOME Shell between Fedora, Stock Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and uh, let's say Manjaro, for, for example. Manjaro and Fedora consistently seem a lot lighter on the fan usage, on CPU usage, and on RAM than do Ubuntu and, and Pop! OS. Now, 
in real life, it doesn't uh, it doesn't lead to any perceivable um, difference in speed or performance, but it is worth mentioning. It just seems that it asks more of the hardware that you have enabled. Uh, one of the other um, things that I re do really appreciate about Pop is the fact that they use a lot of sensitive uh, GNOME extensions out of the box. Now, I kind of I kind of touched on this already when I was talking about switchable graphic controls, uh, graphics card controls, but having that little do not disturb, why is this not stock? Why is this not part of stock GNOME? Because I get super frustrated by the amount of notifications that can come through on things. And yes, I'm aware that you can actually customize all of that now um, through the settings. You can turn notifications on and off, but notifications are useful, just not when I'm trying to get work done. So having that do not disturb switch there by default is very, very helpful. Um, again, I won't really rag on about too much of the stuff that is, uh, that's GNOME 3.32.1 specific, because um, all you really need to know is uh, it feels a lot lighter and you can go and check out the rest in the Ubuntu video. The only other thing I will comment is that uh, Pop! OS seems very finicky about the size of your EFI boot partition. This is something that's pretty unique to my situation. It wanted 500 meg in my EFI boot partition. I only had about 250, so I had to create another one at the end of the disk. And so now I have two EFI boot partitions, uh, which is a little bit messy, but that is what it is. Now, so far, so good in terms of uh, what this distribution is capable of doing and uh, and I have pretty much all the apps that I have uh, that I could want installed on here and uh, Some of the other things that you get as a uh, I guess a convenience of pop OS is that the packages that you have uh, In their custom repositories are a bit more up-to-date and are a bit more well-maintained than a lot of the stuff that comes through the Ubuntu repositories and this includes things like drivers and all that sort of thing so like I mentioned before the the fact that you get a, a, a company whose vested interest is to keep this stuff updated and running well on their system uh, almost guarantees that you're gonna have a pretty good experience on the hardware side of things a really visible example of that is uh, is with apps like Lutris. So Lutris comes uh, is comes at part of the repos for uh, for Pop OS. So you can actually jump into the package manager and just install Lutris straight away without having to add any PPAs or anything. Uh, the same can be said for Steam and the rest of it. And you know that you're accessing the latest stable versions of those apps. And I think that's why Pop OS got the shout out from Linus Tech Tips the other day in terms of a really good option if you are interested in gaming on Linux. And uh, and to that end, if I open up Steam here, it hopefully will log me straight in. And you can see that I could download and install most of the games that I've got in my Steam account here uh, using uh, Proton that comes on Steam. And, uh, and I know that I'm taken care of in terms of graphics drivers and stuff like that. So that's really all I've got to say about Pop. The biggest question for me will be whether I will keep using this one once Fedora 30 comes out, because I'm also very curious to see what stock GNOME on its own feels like and looks like, um, given the recent changes that have happened uh, to GNOME. So if you had to pick between an Ubuntu base or a Fedora base for your distribution, what would it be and why? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. 